In this lesson, we explore intrusion detection, intrusion prevention, and the all-important managing of logs with Security Information and Event Management, or SIM. You can download the script for this video from above or at the end of the video. A good organization of any size is an attack target. Attacks come from humans or from attack tools created by humans. For example, a human could personally use TTP, tool, techniques, and procedures to step through an attack process. However, threat actors also use automated tools to find and initially infect random networks. This means that it doesn't matter what size your network is, it is a target. Intrusion Detection, or IDS, and Intrusion Prevention Systems, IPS, can help detect and respond to attempted attacks or attacks in progress. Detection systems can be standalone appliances, software on a network device, or software on endpoint devices. They are also found on next-gen firewalls. Using threat signatures and behavior analysis, detection systems can either send alerts when a possible threat is detected, block the threat, or both. An IDS does not usually block threats, but it can be configured to create a temporary firewall to block suspicious traffic. As its name implies, it only detects and alerts. An IPS, however, can block threat traffic or only send alerts. How an IPS responds to a threat depends on how it is configured. Each threat type or threat category can have its own configuration, with one threat resulting in only an alert and another resulting in traffic blocking. How a threat is handled can also depend on the traffic affected. Detection systems should be placed to look at all traffic, both incoming or ingress and outgoing or egress. One of the challenges associated with implementing IDS IPS is dealing with false positives. When a detection device is first implemented, it will inevitably begin reporting on or blocking actual business traffic. This is why tuning is needed. When first implementing a detection device, it is configured in audit mode. This means that it will log all potential attacks, but it will not block or alert on them. The security team then works over time to configure the device to ignore normal business traffic. Tuning can take weeks to complete, depending on the amount of traffic the device is intended to monitor. It's important to understand that going too far in reducing false positives can also go too far and increasing the possibility of false negatives. In other words, as we configure the device to ignore various traffic types, we also begin to increase the probability that the device will miss a threat. This is why we place the detection devices in various places on the network. For example, the IPS at the perimeter might allow fewer false positives and more false negatives to ensure the quick flow of traffic. The organization would then place IPS or IDS devices at the gateways into highly classified network segments that are tightly configured to allow only expected traffic patterns. Security devices help protect organizations, but they are often spot solutions that have no idea about overall attack patterns. This is the role of Security Information and Event Management, or SIM. The purpose of a SIEM, S-I-E-M, is to reduce staff efforts needed to review individual logs and to identify overall patterns across multiple devices that indicate the inevitable threat on the network. As shown in this graphic, a SIEM solution collects logs from key points across the network. The log information is aggregated, usually into a syslog server. A SIEM tool then correlates the log information, both historical and current, to identify threat patterns that no one security appliance would be able to detect. These threat patterns are known as indicators of attack and indicators of compromise. In many current solutions, machine learning is used to help learn and more accurately identify threats that have made it onto an organization's network. As with IPS and IDS, new SIM solutions must be tuned. Tuning helps the SIM system learn the network baseline activity. It is the, t the statistical movement from the baseline, as defined by the security team, that will result in an alert. 
The sim will prioritize alerts based on machine learning and defined rules. Alerts must still be analyzed to determine their validity. This still means that humans must be available to respond to what the SIM finds. A 24-7 response capability is preferred, and this often means outsourcing SIM capabilities or monitoring to release internal security analysts for tasks that add more business value. Finally, the CISSP Common Body of Knowledge lists three main languages used for threat analysis. STIX, Structured Threat Information Expression, Cybox, Cyber Observable Expression, and Taxi, Trusted Automation Exchange of Indicator Information. Well, that's it for this lesson. If you have questions, please ask. And until next time, be careful what you click.